Thank you again, everyone, for joining the 2022 Jedi Chicago Virtual Shinenkai. Um, my name is Gabriel Coronado. I am the current president for the Chicago chapter of the JET Alumni Association. For those of you that don't know, uh, we our chapter um, is responsible for Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin. Uh, and it's an amazing organization. So I appreciate all of you guys coming out tonight and helping us celebrate the new year and celebrate our uh, connections with between Japan and the US. So to kick us off, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Consul General uh, Tajima, who has uh, graciously joined us tonight to help start the celebration. So good evening, everyone, and happy new year. Um, I'm Hiroshi Tajima, the Consul General of Japan in Chicago. I'm excited to join you for tonight's Shinenkai and food presentation. I'd like to express my sincere appreciation to the JET Alumni Association of Chicago for putting together this event. Uh, for 35 years, JETs and JET alumni have been a real asset uh, of our Japan-US relationship. Every year, Chicago sends over 150 new jets to Japan. I've heard so many stories about how jets have made positive impacts on their uh, communities in Japan and then brought back uh, the Japanese culture of uh, home. In recent year, COVID has affected many jet AAs and jets who are in Japan when, when the outbreak uh, happened. Though when there is a shadow, uh, there is always a light. In this difficult time, we've learned how to gather virtually in a safe manner like today. I'm grateful for the JET AA of Chicago continuing to host various interesting events so we can enjoy and maintain our connection to Japan. I look forward to seeing the various foods you prepare today. And also please enjoy the food presentation of, from our chef at the official residence of the Consul General, Consul, uh, Consul General, Ms. Uh, Mr. Satoshi Ito later on. Thank you very much. And I hope you'll continue to enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you very much, uh, Consul General. I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking the time to be here with us tonight. And I know you're relatively new to the Midwest, but we are very excited to have you. Uh, and I look forward to, to working with you into the future. So thank you again for, for joining us. All right, so I think no event has really started until we've done a little bit of a compi. And I will ask everyone if they want to participate to please turn on their video because I would like to take a screenshot of everyone cheersing to, to start the evening. Um, so, um, with no further ado, before we get into the presentations and the wonderful trivia that our own Cassie Conrad has prepared for us, I will say thank you again to everyone for joining us. Thank you for helping us celebrate the new year and our continued connection to Japan. And also, um, thank you for helping us come together to support uh, the Japan American Society of Chicago and the Japanese Culture Center, uh, two of our wonderful partners locally. Um, that have been amazing for us for years and years. So um, I'll raise my glass, Kampai, and uh, I look forward to a wonderful event. Kampai. All right. It's bad luck if you don't take a drink after the Kampai, whether it's water or whatever. Uh, but I do have to take a screenshot. So hold on one second. Bear with me. All right. So if everyone wouldn't mind holding up their glass, we will. On three, take a photo. One, two, three. All right, thank you very much. All right, so without further ado, um, we're gonna get into the presentations. Our first one is Jerry Lai, a friend of Jet, who um, is behind the YouTube channel, The Chicago Griller. So I will pass it over to him and he will uh, walk us through his presentation. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction, Gabe. And uh, it's nice to see everybody here. 
Um, for those of you who may or may not have joined last year, um, I was invited by Jet AA for a presentation as well um, for a cooking demonstration. Um, that was in the summer, but it got a little bit spoiled by rain, so it was a little bit entertaining to uh, watch me frantically try to transition indoors and uh, and uh, subsequently melt an old iPad, <laughs> which is now retired. Um, today will not be a demonstration because it is February in Chicago, and uh, if we thought the weather was bad last year in the summer, it's quite bad out there right now. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to go over, you know, why how I started the channel, why I did it, and, you know, what I focus on. Obviously, you know, I'm of Asian descent, and I love cooking Asian food and, and Japanese food in particular, and, and I just want to discuss why. Um, I prepared kind of a pre-made video uh, with this presentation, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and play that now. So um, it would not be a Zoom meeting without a screen share, right? So here we go. Oh, uh, Jerry? Yes. Is it running? There doesn't seem to be audio um, to play, uh, or we can't hear it. It is playing, but we can't hear the audio. All right, let's start over. Um, I will just roll with it then. <laughs> you guys can hear my actual voice though, right? Yeah, we can hear your voice. All right, let me do this again, and I'll just talk about this here. We'll, we'll go for it. So as I was trying to say was, um, this is my YouTube channel, The Chicago Griller. Um, the link to it is below, or you could easily search, actually, let me play it. Again, this wouldn't be a Zoom meeting without some, uh, some technical hiccups and glitches, right? Everybody's seen that. Oops. All right, so this this is my, um, hold on a second. Sorry about that. I thought it would play the, oh, here we go. I got it now. Full master or a chef. In fact, I am a professor. There we go, we got it. This is my YouTube channel, The Chicago Griller. The link to it is youtube.com slash Chicago Griller, or you can just type Chicago Griller in the search box and it should come up at the top. Now, I am by no means a professional grill master or a chef. In fact, I am a professional photographer and photo editor by trade. My work does take me all around the world, including this past Tokyo Olympics, where I worked as a photo editor. So how did that tie into the Chicago Griller? Well, the pandemic hit, and just like everybody else, I needed a hobby. So a skill I always wanted to pick up was video editing. So naturally, this was a great time to learn. You'd think that I would do a sports photography channel instead of a grilling channel, but at the time, I thought that I had to eat every day anyways, so it wouldn't really be that hard for me to put a camera out on my grill and make videos of my cooking. So that is exactly how the Chicago Griller was born. I did actually also eventually start a sports photography channel, but I digress. Let's get back to the Chicago Griller. So how exactly does this all tie together with Jet AA? Well, I am Asian, obviously. So naturally, I have an Asian recipe playlist on my YouTube channel. But my favorite type of food of all is Japanese. Now, all of us here know that the Japanese language itself is very complicated and difficult to learn. But Japanese food? is not. 
In fact, many may say that the Japanese really take pride in the simplicity of their foods and really allowing the foods to naturally shine. And so while some of these dishes may look really complex, they really, really pack a punch despite how simple they look. For example, take a look at these chicken wings or teba shō in Japanese, salted chicken wings. I do have a full video link for this preparation, but at the end of the day, all it takes is some sake as a marinade and then salt and pepper to taste. This is followed up by 40 minutes on high heat on the grill or 400 degrees for 40 minutes in an oven. Then it's plated up and garnished with some lemon wedges and shichimi togarashi. Yeah, it's really that simple. Sake, salt, pepper, lemon, and chili peppers. And again, don't let the simplicity of this deceive you. I had a commenter say that they now make this chicken all the time. And in fact, my fiance Sheila was just telling me the other day that I need to make this again, like ASAP. So maybe we'll do that this week. But we could go on and on with simple Japanese recipes. Shiozake, salted salmon, is prepared basically the same way as tebashio. I've not done this particular recipe on the grill or on my channel yet, but I understand the prep is the same. It's a sake marinade followed up with just salt and pepper. Then you just garnish it with a daikon slaw and soy sauce. Now, this is not to say that every dish is as simple as salt and pepper, if only it were that easy. As you kind of improve upon your skills and want to try different things, you can, even if it's just baby steps baby steps in the form of using teriyaki sauce, like in this hibachi zucchini that I made up. This is just zucchini, red onions, chili flakes, and teriyaki sauce. The yakitori or grilled chicken is basically the same thing. It's just grilled chicken with teriyaki sauce on top of it, or tare. Yaki onigiri, all the same. In fact, even simpler. This is literally just rice balls with tare or teriyaki sauce on it. It's so simple, you could even make a business out of just selling yaki onigiri. In fact, there is here in Chicago with the onigiri shuttle. Now, this is not to say that Japanese don't have some multi-step or more difficult recipes to make, because they certainly do. But as your confidence grows, you may start experimenting with homemade karage or even okonomiyaki like myself, which has also turned out to be quite the household faith. But all in all, like I said, initially, one of the reasons that I really enjoyed making Japanese food and how it's really helped me evolve as a cook is how simple it really is and how, for the most part, Japanese cooking allows food to shine naturally. Okay, so um, that was just my short little video with... Um, some of my thoughts on, on stop the share. There we go. Just some of my thoughts on you know how the channel has started and why I did it, and you know why Japanese food is kind of near and dear to me. Obviously, we all love the taste of it, but as far as someone who is an amateur cook and an amateur chef, um, although I like to joke that because I'm a YouTuber and. I'm now a professional chef, but <laughs> that's not really necessarily true. Um, it, it really is easy to make, you know, cooking may be intimidating to some, but it's really just being good at following directions. And it's really hard not to follow directions when the ingredients list literally are chicken wings, sake, salt and pepper, and that's it. And then optional lemon and, and chili pepper and chili flakes. So I, th I think it's something that everybody can try. I, I hope um, you guys might get a chance to poke around on my channel or my Asian playlist or both, of course, and, and take a look. I try to walk through recipes in a very simple and, and straightforward manner. And um, it's amazing how far it's grown. When I first came on last year, I think I only had 100 subscribers and now I'm up to 6,300 and that was less than 12 months ago. So it's been fun seeing that go, and it really pushed me to keep making content every week. Um, sometimes it does feel like a job. I know Sheila sees me sometimes frantically on Wednesday or Thursday. He's like, oh my God, I got I to get something out for, for this Friday. And, and, and we kind of brainstorm together what we can do. 
So um, it's also allowed us to eat really, really well at home. So hopefully I can inspire some of you with um, the recipes on the channel, um, particularly the Japanese dishes. But if you see anything you like um, on there, hope you give it a shot. So um, at this point, I guess we'll open up to any questions that you all might have. Thank you very, Thank you much. very much. Thank you very much, Jerry. Uh, what was the what was the garnish on the the steak at the end of the video? That is just wasabi. So that was one of the first videos I made when I was still a very small channel. And I don't remember where I got. Oh, no, I remember where I got the idea. I got their idea from the Weber Grills Japan channel to make what they called sushi steak. And so um, I have an interest in Japanese. I'm Taiwanese, but I have a very strong interest in Japanese culture. As, as you all know, the Taiwanese and the Japanese have a very unique um, relationship with each other in that the Taiwanese like adore the Japanese. That's not why I adore the Japanese, but <laughs> or, I don't know. Well, maybe, 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 um, <laughs> um, you know, subliminally, but um, I, I took Japanese for on and off for two years trying to learn to speak it before the 2020 Olympics. Um, now the Japanese Weber Grills channel is all in Japanese. So I'm trying to try to follow along on their sushi steak recipe. Um, but it turned out to be like everything else I said, a lot of the recipes are really simple. That's just a grilled steak with salt, pepper, garlic. And that's cooked to rare. As you saw, it's pretty red. Um, but uh, that garnish on top was just straight up wasabi and it was delicious. So you guys come on over sometime if there's a big jet barbecue and uh, that'll be on the menu. I might, I might have to hold you to that. Uh, everything looked amazing. Everything looked amazing. So thank you again for, for sharing your experience and uh, definitely everybody check out the, check out that YouTube channel when you have, when you have a chance. Does anyone else have any questions for, for Jerry while we have him here? Feel free to unmute yourself if you do, or I, you can also type it in the chat. I do see a question in the chat that says uh, from Sheila. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, I've heard that the Weber grill is very popular in Japan and Australia because of its smaller size. Um, that is actually very true. So my channel specifically focuses on that Weber Q series of grill, which is actually a small portable gas grill. It works really well here in Chicago in the city because you don't always have a lot of real estate to plant like a smoker or, and then some places might not even allow charcoal. And the purpose of it was to show, the purpose of my channel was to show that you could really cook anything even if you just, just have a gas grill. In America, there's kind of the reputation that everything is, everything is bigger, must be better. But that's not true. You could do anything that you can do on a larger gas grill on a portable tailgating style grill with the ex with some limited exceptions, of course, like I can't go like, you know, roast a giant 13 pound brisket or like a 20 pound turkey in the thing. But um, I've, I found that you could pretty much you name it, I could probably find a way to grill it up. Um, but Similarly, you know, this kind of grill is popular in other countries because they don't have this whole bigger is better mentality. So it's really that's I think that's exactly why Weber Grills Japan has done a feature series on the Q because it is portable. And as you know, Japanese spaces are small. So um, it's been I, I think it. It's pretty popular out there. I don't know for sure, but, um, you know, Japanese have a great grilling culture. And so I'm sure a lot of these dishes translate well, even to gas. All right, awesome. There was another question. Uh, what are your favorite vegetarian and or vegan recipes? <laughs> um, so truth be told, I haven't really thought much about vegan recipes. If we're talking about Japanese, I know that it's actually quite hard to eat vegan in Japan. Um, I had a colleague who we were supposed to bring to Tokyo with us, and at first, um, our, at first glance, we were thinking, oh, you know what, it actually would be easy as a vegan to eat in Japan, but then you realize almost everything has dashi in it, so, so it's, or, or, you know, cooked in like fish broth, so it's actually extremely difficult. Um, she ended up not going because of the pandemic, but uh, we thankfully didn't have to solve, you know, her hunger problems there, um, but my favorite recipes that I've done, 
that hibachi zucchini that I did is awesome. <laughs> and it's so simple. It's just salt, pepper, red onion, uh, zucchini, just grilled until it's softened and tender. And I mean, you could have it just like that and it's delicious or <laughs> teriyaki sauce makes everything better, <laughs> says, says the American, <laughs> says the Asian American. All right, awesome. And then there, it looks like we have another one from Laura. Laura, did you want to ask this one yourself? All right. So, are there any Jap? She's to, she told me that I can do it. So, are there any are there any Japanese ingredients, uh, spices, sauces, marinades, etc. You've had to substitute with things you can easily find at a typical American supermarket? So, I'm a little bit spoiled here. We're well, we are a little bit spoiled here in Chicago in that there are Asian markets nearby. Um, I don't think there's a Japanese specific one in the Chicago area, but H Mart is a big Korean focused shop. There's one, it's on Jackson Avenue and then there's a number of them out in the burbs, but they do carry a lot of these Japanese ingredients there. So uh, you can get dashi there. Um, I think they do have, I think I did buy that shichimi togarashi at, um, it says ichimi togarashi, but I think it actually is shichimi togarashi because seven, seven chili peppers. So I don't know why the bottle says ichimi. Maybe someone who's better at Japanese can explain that one to me. Um, but it's, uh, I guess if you couldn't find that yourself, you could substitute that with just ordinary chili peppers, although it wouldn't have exactly the same flavor profile necessarily. Um, and then obviously with like different types of Asian vinegars, you can also replace with, you know, just distilled vinegar or apple cider vinegar, but it also wouldn't necessarily be the same. Um, but again, like I said, we're, we're spoiled here in Chicago, um, in that it's readily available. Um, and I guess if all else fails, there's always Amazon as, as Sheila mentioned, you know, I seem to have a lot of Australian followers, so I cater to them a little bit sometimes and right now it's winter in Australia so I, I try to do a lot of their dishes so I bought this this tin or this jar of stuff called Vegemite which is some Australian like yeast paste uh, that they put on bread and um, yeah you can't get it here in Chicago I bought it on Amazon so Amazon if all else fails all right awesome are are there any other questions for Jerry Oh, I see another one in the chat. It's um, saying, I saw you have from, also from Laura, I saw that you have two types of grilling services in your video, one that looked like a flat top grill. Uh, and of course the traditional grates. Um, you know, it's, it comes down to a matter of preference. Um, and actually, to be honest, a lot of the Japanese dishes do utilize that, that flat top surface, kind of like the hibachi style surface. Um, I, I, the differences in that is it just, I think the Japanese like, I don't know, maybe, I think I might just making this up now, but I think a lot of Japanese dishes call for kind of like a seared crust. And that's kind of what the flat surface does. The, the grated surface allows kind of the grease and all that stuff to fall off, but maybe that's less of a concern with Japanese food. Um, cause as you know, Japanese food is not known to be greasy or overly oily. So, um, I think maybe they could get away, um, with that kind of surface a lot more. And I know like a lot of their beef and like, like Wagyu, for example, is made on a flat surface. You never, um, they do do some of that charcoal grilling, like with Binto Chan or Yaki, traditional Yakitori is over like grates and coals. But yeah, a lot of that stuff. Uh, a lot of grilling that they do is on a flat surface. Yaki soba, yaki onigiri, um, even the shiozake is done on a flat surface as well. So um, I guess it just depends on what you're cooking. But that is my top used accessory, that flat surface. Might be time to might be time to make some yaki soba at home for sure. Yeah, maybe that sounds. That sounds yeah, that sounds see, amazing. look at look at this. We're coming up with ideas right here. <laughs> All right, awesome. Thank you very much again, Jerry. Are there are there any other questions? I didn't in case I missed anything in the chat. I don't think so. No, oh, I, I got clarification. It is uh, one type of spice, so it is ichimi togarashi, not shichimi togarashi. Then there you go. Thank you very much for that clarification, Lynn. 
All right. So again, thank you, Jerry. Um, I really appreciate you coming out. It was really, really in interesting to hear about your experience uh, starting the YouTube channel and kind of picking up this hobby during the pandemic. I know, like you said yourself, everybody had to, everybody had to find something to do. So thank you again for joining us. You, you got to eat anyways. And I taught myself a very useful skill for work. So uh, thank you all for having me. Um, I'm glad to be here. Um, and I'm also happy not to melt any devices this time. So that's a that's a positive. I think we have I think we have that video somewhere. Maybe we'll, <laughs> maybe we'll post a little clip of it. But no, thank you again, Jerry. And uh, yeah, for sure, everyone. Um, we'll include the links to to Jerry's YouTube channel in the in the follow up emails. So if anyone um, would like to, please please go to YouTube and give them a follow. So um, we'll move on to our next presenter, I think, and that is. Um, we've actually been joined by the personal chef for Consulate General Tajima, uh, Satoshi Ito, has come tonight to talk to us about uh, his tamagoyaki uh, cooking method. So I will pass it over to him without further ado. Hi everyone, nice to meet you. I am Satoshi Ito. Uh, I'm a Japanese chef. I introduce you. Japanese tamagoyaki. Uh, sorry, I'm my English. My English is not good. I speak Japanese. Let's start with this. It's three eggs, 90cc dashi dash soup, and 15cc soy sauce. 15cc sugar. And then, I'll take it out of the pot. 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 フライパンを温めてください。で、動画のように火の温度を見ながら一番強くフライパンがちゃんと温まったかを確認して油を引きます。この時に油を引きすると、しまき卵に油の香りがついてしまうので最低限少なめの油で焼いていきます。動画のように箸でフライパンの温度を確認しながら卵がすぐ焼けるようになったら何液を流しますちょっと音が聞こえないので音がジューっていったらいい感じの温度ですすぐに卵が固まるので手早く泡を潰してフライパン全体に卵を
お好みで調整していただいて結構ですので,でこの時に醤油が多すぎると焦げがつきやすくなるので気をつけて調味料の量は調整してくださいで今回負けたら次の卵液で最後になるんですが卵のカスのようなやつはあのリードで取っていただいてフライパンの温度がこのように上がりすぎたときに火のところで焦ってやってしまうとどんどん焦げていくので一度火から外していただいてまた卵で調整しながらで今回最後に巻いていきますでこのときはあまり破れないように卵がそうするときれいに焼き上がるのでこれで完成ですねあんまりないかもしれないですけど、巻き酢で繰り返して、形を調整して、こちらで出来上がりです。卵3個分のサイズでしたら、大体4個か5個か、今回は6等分にしてるんです。2の倍数の方が切りやすいと思うので、いい大きさに切ってもらって完成です。はい、ありがとうございます。Thank you。Thank you. Thank you so much, Chefito. That was, um, that was amazing.、Uh, I will give it a try. But I don't know if mine will be quite camera worthy like yours was. So thank you so much.、Um, I, are, would it be all right if anyone has any questions? Are there any questions for, for Chef Ito? Oh, so we do have one.、Um, so what, what do you think? It is about the ingredients in tamagoyaki that really bring out the flavor of the eggs. Soy sauce, of course, soy sauce. Soy sauce. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I think.、Uh, are, there any other, are there any other questions for, for Chef Ito? It looks like you've, you have inspired everyone to, to maybe try this at home. So thank you very much for sharing it with us. Thank you very much. All right.、Uh, so. Thank you again.、Uh, I, don't, I think Jerry may have dropped off, but thank you again to Jerry for, for joining us. And thank you again,、uh, Consul General Tajima and、uh, Chef Ito, for, for that amazing presentation. Like I said, I'm going to give it a try. I'm just not quite sure. So we'll, we'll see what happens.、Um, we have a little bit of time. We'll probably start trivia around 7 50. There's two rounds and 20 questions total, but I'll let Cassie tell you a little bit more about that、uh, in a few. One of the things that we really wanted to do tonight,、um, as part of our kind of continuing, continuing our connections to Japan, was, was offer to do a recipe swap.、Um, any recipe, really,、uh, it can be one that, that has special meaning to you from your time in Japan. It can be one that has special meaning to you since you've returned from Japan.、Uh, but I know that Sheila has, I believe Sheila has one that she was planning on sharing. And I apologize, Sheila. I, Believe I said I would message you in advance and I did not. So that is, that is my mistake.、Um, but if, if you brought one and you have any interest in sharing anyone,、um, we'd, love to, we'd love to hear about them in the time that we have. And if you don't have an actual form, formal recipe, if you'd like to tell us about something that has meaning to you, we'd also love to, to hear that as well. So, Sheila, would you mind? Yeah, sure. So I have one I could share.、Um, it's a PDF. So would I share that in the link or? 
um, afterwards. I'm not sure. Does Zoom allow you? It does actually allow you to share. It does. We yeah. can also, we'll also plan to put them all, anyone that has one that they'd like to share, we'll plan to put them together afterwards and, and share them out. Great. So I just sent it. Um, sorry, is there any spelling mistakes? But hopefully it's there um, that you can follow along. But it's actually the one Jerry briefly talked about it, the um, Tabe Shio, the uh, chicken wings. Um, I was really surprised at how, um, and by my above question was a little bit more philosophical. So thank you, Gabe, for simplifying it. Um, but what got me thinking in the book I read was talking about the some difference between French and Japanese cuisine, um, talking about how in, chefs in Japan really try, I'm sorry, chefs in France sometimes try to put their own mark on things and make it very unique, you know, which is one difference. But in Japan, they really try to bring out that ingredient, whether it be daikon or daikon or eggs or whatever they're working with. So that's what I think was really interesting about this one that brings out that flavor of the chicken, but it's so simple. Um, that's not something I really thought about before going to Japan. I lived in a seaside town where um, like firefly squid, these small little squid were really popular and they weren't necessarily my favorite thing to eat. Um, but I was really impressed with what they did with familiar ingredients that I ate at home, like chicken, um, that just had a completely different flavor than what I was used to um, growing up. So that's why I wanted to share um, the one that um, Jerry put his own spin on on a grill, but it's adapted from Just One Cookbook, which is a nice, um, really great website I use for Japanese cooking that I um, also link to um, in the recipe. So I hope you all um, enjoy it. And if there's anyone else who had one they want to talk about verbally or um, share, I would be interested in hearing that. And I know I'm sure others would be as well. I, I can't stress enough how amazing Just One Cookbook is. Um, I personally have used many of those recipes at home, uh, and I am by no means a professional chef or even what I would call a skilled chef, but they, they usually turn out okay. So definitely just one cookbook is, is an amazing resource. Did anyone else have a recipe that they would like to share or a, an experience they would like to discuss with the group? I can share one. All right, great. Thanks, Cassie. Um, so should be no surprise to my fellow board members, but I'm putting a link to a recipe for chicken nanban in the chat. Um, chicken nanban is a Miyazaki specialty, and it's one of my favorite foods ever. And I was lucky enough to take a class to learn how to make it one time. Um, it is kind of tricky. My favorite, um, my favorite restaurant that sure serves chicken nanban, it's still very crispy, even though the chicken has been dipped in a sauce. And so I have a hard time re replicating that crispiness. And the best I've been able to do is to, after I fry it, I fry it again in an air fryer to get that crispiness back. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's not how they do it. Yes, see if it helps. Jerry um, does patting the patting the dry. I know, like the chicken, the dry beforehand. I think that really helps with crispiness. Um, he said, when you hear that crackling sound, it's a really good um, sign that the skin is really dry. So I don't know if that recipe calls for really getting that skin dry. Sometimes people leave it overnight in the fridge without a cover. Um, I know that like kind of dries it out. That's right. Got it dried off. Yeah, that's just my favorite recipe from Japan. Thank you, Cassie. Now, where's 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 my chicken nanba? Where is my chicken nanba? I sent you the link. I know, but that's just a picture, Cassie. <laughs> There's a recipe in there. I'm gonna try it. Right after I do my curry from scratch. I'm still I still have to try Japanese curry from scratch. Last time was a disaster. Uh, <laughs> but hopefully this time I'm a little more experienced and I think it'll be okay. Um, I will point out that the tartar sauce in this recipe makes a ton. And it doesn't keep very long. All right, good to know, good to know. Uh, does anyone else have one that, they, that they'd like to share? And like I said, we're gonna, um, Chef Ito also generously shared the recipe, his recipe for tamagoyaki. So we'll be sharing out all of the ones that were 
that were presented tonight for the group. All right. Um, what did, what did, oh, Laura posted Funazushi and Omi beef. Laura, what is Omi beef? It's a particular type of beef that um, it's kind of like people would say in Shiga that it was better than Kobe beef, but I disagree. Um, so Omi beef. So I, I was in the prefecture of Shiga, which has um, the only freshwater lake in Japan. Hence, it's the sister city to Michigan, um, with like Biwako. And so Omi beef was just their beef that they raised around Biwako. And so with that, they usually served it like sashimi style. And so I'm like, that's not really a recipe and I can't get that here. <laughs> um, so that's Omi beef. Um, so if you go to Shiga or can get it imported, please have it. It is good, but I, I'd have Kobe beef and it's pretty good too. Um, but Funazushi is like fermented fish that Shiga was known for. And I could not find any like recipe for it in English <laughs> that I could read. Um, and uh, yeah, it is stinky, but it's good. Um, if you like fish. So those were like the two main things from Shiga. The other ones were all kind of like, oh, okonomiyaki, but that's technically like Osaka style. Um, and I couldn't find a good Hiroshima style okonomiyaki recipe that I wanted to share. So if anybody has one of those, let me know. Tyler, I'm interested in the um, veggie ramen one that you you had a comment earlier that in Hokkaido, or I think you said you ate it. Uh, that was sounded interesting. I, uh, I have no idea how to make it. <laughs> there's a restaurant um, relating to vegan food in Japan. I definitely know there's a struggle around uh, kind of getting that, but there's a really good vegan ramen restaurant in the bottom of Sendaiki. And it is really, really there's like tempeh and uh, a lot of meat alternatives. It's really, really good. You would not guess that it's, you know, without using any like dashi or any uh, animal products. So very tasty if you're in uh, the basement of Sendai Station. Very cool. Is it a soy broth, like based on um, something? I know they would, might use like, a, is it a soy milk that they use or? I don't know. Like they had um, several different kinds, but yeah, I think most of them are like the shoyu broth and like the soy okay. broth. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a chain. So I think it's kind of expanded to a few other places now. Sounds good. I don't think I have I've ever tried vegetarian or vegan ramen. I don't know if I've ever even seen it on the menu, but might be something to give a try. All right, I will say when I went to Japan, I had no idea how to cook anything. The first time I went to the grocery store, I bought tofu, milk, and green peppers. Uh, and that tofu sat in my fridge for the entire year uh, that I was in Miyazaki. So never actually made anything with it, uh, but it was there as a reminder of my failings when I arrived. But I think I really enjoy the the recipe sharing. Um, I know it's one of the things we do for the outgoing jets before they before they leave every year, uh, because I think it's important. It's important to talk about these things. It's important to to set, you know, to set each other up for success and also give each other new things to try. So I appreciate I appreciate everyone sharing uh, the recipes with us tonight.